How's it going, guys? So a couple days ago, I posted this uh, animation on Instagram. The response was huge, and I got tons of tutorial requests. So I'm going to break down this animation right here. If you want to get the project file, it's in the description for a dollar. If you are on Patreon, you'll be getting that file for free. If you don't know about the Patreon, there's tons of project files on there, exclusive tutorials. I just dropped a pack of 50 looping animations with the project files for all that stuff, as well as the glitch pack, which is 10 procedural glitch materials, the iridescent pack, and I'll be dropping the wood pack this month on Patreon as well. So if you want to grab all that stuff, you can head over to the Patreon. It's in the description. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right, so first off, we're going to make uh, the sort of building type of thing so we're going to take a cube here and then I'm going to hit this little icon right over here and I'm just going to scale it to however tall I want my building to be something like that I'm gonna hit control a and apply scale I'm gonna hit tab right click subdivide um, but before that you can see how the, this face is very long and this face is square and I kind of want to even it out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a loop cut here and, and just going to click these loop cuts right here just like that and now we have even faces all over because now I'm going to be using some uh, extrusion so what I'm gonna do is make sure I'm in face select mode up here click one face then right up here go to select select random and I'll bring this percent slider down a little bit and I'm just gonna click the uh, random seed till I like the uh, selection of squares I have I kind of like that now I'm gonna hit I to inset but I'm gonna hit it twice so it insets the individual scare squares not all at once so I I bring it in like this something like this I'm gonna hit now I'm going to extrude but if you just hit E it does that and we don't want that so right up here you're gonna see individual origins now hit E and then just use your mouse to, to do that I'm gonna right click subdivide again and subdivide it quite a few times like this I'm going to hit I again to subdivide that. And um, then I'm going to hit E and bring it in. So they're in like this. All right, now I'm going to hit Control Plus like this. So it selects all those. Now that all of these are selected, I'm going to hit Control I to inverse that selection. So now we're not messing with the thing that we just modeled. I'm going to hit I again like this. And then I'm going to hit E and bring it out just a tad bit and now we have the basis of our sort of greeble um, building thing now we can start adding even more detail with a uh, procedural material so let's hop on over to the shading tab and I'm gonna hit this little drop down and bring my background out so I can see better and then I'm gonna zoom in here I'm gonna click new make it metallic now I'm gonna hit shift a and add a bump node B U M P right here and I'm going to plug this normal into the normal here on the bottom of the principled. Then I'm going to get a brick texture right here. And I'm going to plug the color into the height. And then um, first off, I need to unwrap this. So I'm going to hit tab, hit A to make sure everything's selected. I'm going to hit U and I'm going to click right here, cube projection. That's sort of an automated system. So we don't actually have to unwrap everything. And then if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, control T. It adds a mapping node and a texture coordinate. And to use that unwrapping we just did, we're going to use the UV coordinate. And what that's going to do is now you can see the squares, I mean the bricks, are now evenly placed, unlike on the generated one, where they're even and then stretched out on here. So that's what the unwrapping just did. And it unwraps it in a cube uh, pattern. So what I want to do is get my row height the same as my brick width. So 0 0.5. So now everything's even. We can bring up my scale by a pretty significant number here and then bring my strength down a little bit and then bring up my mortar smoothness. So now we get even more details on this. Now we just need to add two more nodes to add just a little bit more sci-fi-ness to this. And that's going to be right here with adding a Voronoi node. Plug that there and we're going to change Elucidian to Chebyshev. And then we're going to add a mix RGB because we don't want this Voronoi node to be taking over everything. We just want to use a little bit of it. So we're going to add the mix right there and then get the UV socket and put it in color two. What that's going to allow us to do is if we bring the factor to one, you can just sort of introduce that Voronoi node just a little bit, bring up the scale just, and now we've added just another component of sci-fi greebleness uh, to the model we created and it adds just all this crazy detail, which is what we're looking for. And then now, when we, now we're going to add a color ramp up here to color some of these. Plug the color ramp right here into the color. And then take this brick texture. Add that there. So now we get all this. I want to take this black portion and bring it closer to the gray so there's not so much contrast. 
All right, now we're gonna add some little glowing squares in this. So we need to add two more nodes, a mix shader. We're gonna add an emission material, EM, right here. And what's that? what that's gonna allow us to do is, all right, so now we have these two things set up. We need to sort of tell them where to show up. Now they're just mixing together and it doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna get a color ramp right here. We're gonna get a brick texture. So we'll just duplicate this one, just like this. And then we'll plug the color into the uh, color ramp here and then control T to add that set setup and then use the UV coordinates. And then now we can start bringing in this black portion to make those windows and then bring our scale way up, something like this. we we'll are change it from linear to constant which is going to allow it to be just a hard edge. So just some windows show up like this. And this sort of gives us the semblance, the sort of hint of windows, but doesn't actually look like physically correct windows because this is motion graphics and a lot of things are just zooming by really quickly. And it just gives you that hint. I'm gonna make my windows kind of blue because we're gonna be working on more of the blue side and we'll bring up the uh, glare and then um, maybe remove some of these windows, something like this. So now we have, or sort of greeble spaceship thing. Just so much detail on here. It's hard to make out what's going on, but that's what we want uh, it to look. Now we can go ahead and start making the rest of this scene. So we're going to hit G to move him just out of the way. We're going to hit Shift A and add a cube. I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit S Y eight. That scales it on the Y axis by eight. And I'm going to hit Tab. Make sure I'm in face select. I'm going to hit this guy. Hold Shift. Hit that guy. X and click faces. So now we have our tube that we're gonna fly our camera through to make this a looping seamless animation. So let's add in our particle system to this guy. So right over here, click particle system, click new. We're gonna use hair, go down to go down to render from path to object and then select our object, which is the first cube. Now you get all this. If you go to material preview, you get this really cool looking Borg spaceship thing, but that's not what we're going for. All right, right here on source, we're gonna go from jittered to random. And then um, right here on scale randomness, bring it all the way down. And then make sure that right here on object, make sure object rotation is enabled so that we can rotate our object a little bit later. And now let's go ahead and click on our object here, go to the settings and play with the rotation. So we'll have him here and then we'll rotate him like this, which is how I got that um, rotation. So if we just look inside of our scene here, we'll just go to look dev. And uh, if you rotate your cube on the Y axis, you get all this really weird, cool looking movement. I'm gonna bring, uh, I'm gonna go back to the particle system. All right, I'm gonna bring the, uh, the hair length down just a little bit so we can get some better scale. Now we can start shading this first off on the cube here. I'm just gonna add that same material we made uh, just to add some just to sort of make him kind of invisible. Now let's go ahead and add in our camera. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, go to front view, so that when we import our camera, he'll be facing the way we want. So camera, and then we'll, uh, you can see now he's looking down uh, this direction, he's right there. So what I'm gonna do is click him, I'm gonna hold down control so it snaps to the grid. And you want him, if you scaled your box um, by eight, it'll be on the negative eight or the positive eight. It uh, doesn't matter. So let's animate him really quick. So on end here, we're gonna add 120 keyframes, one, two, zero. That's gonna make this a five second animation. So I'm gonna hit the back arrow to go to frame zero. I'm gonna click this little dot right here, go to the very end and type in eight. Now, if your camera was sitting on the uh, positive eight, then you will go to negative eight. And that's how you're gonna get a perfect uh, seamless loop here when you press play. Uh, but before we make it actually seamless, we need to click on this box, hit M, new collection, click OK. What that's going to allow us to do is instance this. So it makes a nice instance duplication. So if you hold down control, hit this little green arrow, you'll make sure it snaps to view, I mean snaps to the grid, and place it right there. It's very important because you want this to be a seamless loop. So you want to make sure that it is going to be snapping to the grid that you want it to snap to. So I'm gonna to go to material preview and just make sure that this does in fact loop seamlessly. Uh, so let's just check it out. Everything's going fine. Perfect, okay. Now we can start shading the way we want. So first off, go to the little camera icon and switch on over to the Eevee render engine. 
and I'm going to make, make sure ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections is on. I'm going to turn off motion blur. Uh, I don't want that. I'm going to take my camera here and just make my uh, focal length pretty wide. And then I'm going to hit G and bring it down and hit R twice to sort of angle him up. And then we can see how that's looking. It's really, really cool. Now let's animate our box, our uh, sort of our particle. So on the cube here, I'm going to uh, bring my Y to zero. Make sure that you are at the at frame zero to animate. I'm going to click him here, go to the very end and give it uh, 360 degrees. And that'll make this another seamless loop. Now all the boxes are rotating the way we want them to rotate. Let's go ahead and start adding some uh, shading to the world. The This whole thing right now, it's just looks insane and not very good. So make sure you go to the world settings and bring your world down to zero. I mean, you're down to um, all the way to black. Go to object mesh and add in a cube hit s8 because we're going to add some volume to this hit m and add it to collection 2 that puts it all on there i'm gonna go over here to shading make sure i'm in rendered view click new i'm gonna delete the default principled and i'm going to add in a volume a principled volume and make sure the volume is plugged into volume here on the material output and bring your density something like this now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A and add a light and add a point light. Now I'm going to go to the light settings and bring the power up pretty far. And then it's too far away from my camera to what I like. Uh, so I'm going to go here to the transform options and on the Y, just bring him closer. Something like right over here. I'm liking that. And then we're going to make the uh, light in the blue region, something like this. And already we are getting a really cool animation. Now click on the point light, hold down control, click on camera, control P, parent that object to the camera. So whenever the camera is moving, the object follows with the camera. Now, one thing I'm gonna add is some contrast into this scene to make it less washed out. Now you can make the light a little bit darker, but I like to do this first. So click on the camera, go to the color management and make sure that you are at very high contrast. And then I'm gonna bring the gamma down to add some pretty harsh contrast into the scene, which makes it really, really nice and cinematic. And then you can just press play, see how it's looking. Of course, when you press play, because of the EV real-time preview, it's gonna look really washed out and bright, but when you pause it, that's how it's gonna look in the render. So design based on the pause, don't design based on when you press play, because EV is gonna be a little bit weird on that. So this is pretty much what we have going. You can play with um, the scale and things like that. You can play with ca the uh, camera position on how you want this whole scene to look, but this is the design. I'll show you how to export it. So click on this little printer icon. Uh, click here to save wherever you want the file to be located. Go from PNG to FFmpeg video encoding to MP4. And then on medium quality, go to perceptually lossless render and render animation. And there you go. That's how you make this really sci-fi looking city uh, spinning animation. I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.